Hi, I'm Eleanor, and today I would like to share with you how I make the beads. First of all, I'll just show you a little bit about what I've made and where my inspiration comes from. And then I will give you a little demonstration. So anyway, to start off with, I was quite inspired when I looked at an egg box and I thought, surely there's something that I can make from this. And I had the idea in the back of my mind, maybe for many years, that uh, there must be some way of making beads very simply. So I experimented a good deal and eventually I arrived at a recipe. So that was how it all began. Not much later on, I went to Crete and I was fascinated by the ancient frescoes of Thyatira, which are displayed in the museum at Heraklion. And I loved the bold, gentle colours. And I loved that ancient treasure sort of look about it, that ancient sort of battered look. And I, I thought it would be lovely to make beads that look like they've just been excavated from an ancient tomb. So here you see one of the earliest necklaces that I made. It's kind of pebbles and I've put a little print of a fern on one of them. And then there's a couple of uh, marble beads there which I have imported. Also, you'll see that I made a silver clasp which gives a nice bit of uh, quality. So after that, one thing led to another and I scrounged around at charity shops and started to uh, use some beads there as well, combined. Here you see the beads all waiting on trays, they're waiting to be threaded and you can play around endlessly and sort out the colours and see which colours want to go next to each other and which would rather not be next to each other and so on and so on. I just love putting colours and textures together. I think you do too. Anyway, here's the next slide, three necklaces. On the left, this one is threaded on elastic. Um, that's so nice and easy to put on. And the one in the middle, that one is threaded with a slip knot, so you can adjust the length. On the right, uh, it's threaded on black leather and it has a silver clasp. So three different kinds of necklaces, all interesting. Then next, I went to Findhorn. I saw the beach all covered with beautiful, beautiful pebbles. And so I made this one and I used aluminium foil to just suggest a little wateriness here and there. Here is another collection. Uh, lots of different colours. I like these faded ancient colours that I talked about. And that's my logo there. I put that on each of my necklaces. Here is a necklace made from beer cans. Yes, another one that I really want to pursue. Much potential there. Look at the really nice, bright, intense colours. And I can combine them with my own Hello hands. there. I thought today I would like to share with you how I make the beads. So you can see this is the starting point, an egg box. So simple. It's a wonderful material. And I start by just tearing it all up, put it in this glass jar. I tear it all up. This is something you can do in your kitchen. It's um, uses equipment that everybody has to hand I think. So there we are. I've got quite a lot of that torn up now. And then you just add some boiling water. Here we are. Plenty of water. And I leave that to soak for about oh five minutes, something like that, uh, just to make sure that it's all really well wetted through. I mean, some people leave it for overnight, but I don't think that's really necessary. 
So you can tell when it's really wetted through because it's just, there's no dry bit in the middle. So there we are, that's there. Now the next thing to do is to whiz it all up in your liquidizer or blender or whatever you have. Uh, I've got this very nice, powerful motor and um, it's not very practical to actually block your eardrums by showing you the noise that it makes but here it is when it comes out of the liquidizer it's a nice real good mush so it's a bit like porridge really now the next thing to do is to get your saucepan and your sieve ordinary kitchen equipment Pour it all in. There we are. And I use a wooden spoon to just push the water through. So it's a lovely smooth mush now. Water goes through very easily. Here we are. Now, I'm just going to pour the water away because we can use the saucepan for something else in a moment. There we are. So you've got your mush, which is quite handleable by this stage. And you can squeeze all the water out. Just put that on there. Squeeze all the water out in your hands like this. Nice and warm. There we are. So here we go. Just squeeze out as much of the water as you can. There, now we have this wonderful potential for making things. Just put this away. Now the next thing to do is to Crumble it all up. Wait a minute, i just got to get rid of a bit more water. There we are. Crumble it all up, like making pastry, really. So just put it into quite nice, fine pieces. So like that. There we are. I know I say there we are too often, but it just helps me think about what I've got to say next. So here we are. <laughs> um, the next thing to go... On is some glue so you get a bit of this stuff and I measure it out with a spoon about like that and it's a very gluey glue there we are now this needs thoroughly mixing up and it's sort of, it's about right when it's slightly slimy and you know that it's really well mixed. That will do, I think. Now the next secret item is filler. Here we are going to use the spoon again measure out about half a teaspoon of half a tablespoon half a dessert spoon and in it goes mix that up even more thoroughly is this like making bread not quite anyway it's quite a sort of kitchen activity isn't it if you don't manage to make any cakes at least you can make beads there we are. That's quite nicely mixed now. Nice and consistent. There aren't any white bits showing. Now this is where the fun bit starts and I can start to mould it. It's quite like a clay really. So what I do is I, I get 
three three fingers on each hand squeeze it together so there might be a little bit of extra water which will come out and then you can very easily just mold it into the shape that you want of course round is what always works very beautifully you might want to just dip your hands into some water to smooth off the edge a little bit there we are now I've put it on this rack to dry and away we go I'll do a smaller one this time a little bit of water not much just to smooth out the edges a bit and of course you can make different shapes you could do it like this I've done quite a lot of round long ones as well So I've got that on my drying rack. What I tend to do uh, with all the beads when I've uh, shaped them, I put them on the wood burner, on the top of the wood burner that is, to dry overnight. Or sometimes I put them in the uh, slow cooker. Anyway, overnight they'll dry nicely and become very hard. So this is just perfect. And then the next thing I do is to add some paint once they're really dry and hard. I've got some beads here that I started to do a little bit of painting with um, but I will just add a little bit more and you can see how I add the paint which is perhaps not what you might expect. Here is a little gift from the supermarket. These are so nice. I have lots and lots of them. So I use very, very little paint. I've got some um, raw sienna here, one of my favourite colours. And I'll just put a very little bit on the brush like that. Mix it up like that. Not much at all. Add a little bit of water. Or maybe... use a pipette to add just a few more drops of water. So that gets mixed up so it's a nice consistent liquid. Not very much of it. Hardly enough to cover the bottom of the container. There we are. So then I can use this bead, this bead that I dried more recently, and I just flick it around in the bowl. It's rather nice not to be limited by brush strokes, I find. So then you can take it out and you've got quite a nice colour on it. Very subtle. Um, this, you can let it dry. And when it's dry, like perhaps this one, you can add a bit more colour. I've got some crimson here, so I'll, I'll add that to the sienna that I've already got. And we'll have a nice strong colour this time. Here we are. That's nicely mixed. So again, we can put the bead in, shake it about a bit. And there we are, we've got a nice individual colour. We can do that like this one as well. There we are. It's nice when the colour only partially covers, I think. It gives a bit more variation. So then, of course, the next thing, once they're dried and coloured, is to drill the holes. I've got a nice little hand drill with a stand. Very important to have a stand because then you've got both hands free to hold the bead. Anyway, so you can see these ones have holes in them, I think, this one, something like that. Anyway, there they all are. I've got lots of beads I've made earlier 
and away you go and all the best with it it's such a nice simple craft to get your head round and thank you for watching next i thought i would show you how i arrange the beads and how i thread them here you see a motley collection miscellaneous all sorts of beads and i just arrange them all on this lovely wooden tray. This tray is really useful because it has a groove in the top so that the beads will just sit comfortably in a row. And you see here there's a, a line and there's one here as well. And that is 18 inches. So that's a sort of standard length for a necklace, which I find works. So this is the fun bit when you can just endlessly Put them all on the rack and play around with them and see what looks right and what doesn't look right and so on and so on. So I'm just laying them all in random fashion and often that's what works the very best. This one is an import from a charity shop but it gives a nice bit of variety. This is one that I've just printed a little bit of um, fern onto. The same with this one, just gives a nice little variation with pattern on it. Uh, this is another one with a little bit of pattern. Anyway, once you've got them nicely arranged, then it's time to make the holes. So this is where the drill comes in. And I'll just get these out of the way. Let's put this over here. This is my drill. This is a wonderful drill. Because you can hold the beads underneath and you've got both hands free. So here we go. It makes a nice clean cut. And you can use sandpaper to smooth off any rough bits. So that's the next thing to do, drill all the holes. I'll just get this out of the way. So now we come to the threading. I use this nice Chinese elastic thread very often. So in order to do that, let's just go back to this tray. I measure out a double length of thread like that, plus a bit more for cutting. Threading, um, no, I don't mean cutting, I mean joining there. So here we are. We've got a double length of thread there. And on the end, I put, if I can find it, here we are, a little paper clip, which is a, a nice stop so the beads don't all shoot off the end. Now the needle is unique. It is just made from tiger wire. Here we are, very fine wire. Just folded into a V shape. And I just loop that through the loop at the end of the elastic. And then you're ready to thread. So I'll just thread some of these, which I drilled earlier and you'll see that that works very well. There we are. It's sometimes quite nice to put some interconnecting beads in. So I've got a few these little white ones. I'm going to put those on as well. And of course the stop works nicely. Here we are now. Oh, 
we'll get another interconnecting bead. Oops, got caught around the edge of my table. Not to worry, wait a moment. There we go. There. I'll just do one more. If I can thread it. There we are. There, so you see that that works very well. Only I've forgotten to put the interconnecting bead in. So let's just go back and do that. Or perhaps I'll just carry on so you don't get too bored. Anyway, there we are. That's how it looks. Now, I'll show you. I've got this bead necklace, which I made earlier. Here it is. Here it is. All threaded on elastic. So I've done this so that I can show you how I tie it up. Make sure that all the beads are close together. Give them a good little shake. And then, I don't know if you were a girl guide, but anyway, it's half hitches. So it's left over right, like that. Pull them up tight, right over left. Right over left, says I. Here we go, just about. There we go. And for good luck, another left over right. So that makes a very nice, neat little knot like that. You can see that. And then you can snip off the ends. I like to just stretch it over a yogurt pot like this. And then I can snip off the ends. There we are. So that's very nice and neat. I've left the ends a little bit longer than I would normally, just so that you could see them better. Anyway, there's your necklace. Isn't that lovely? And so easy to make. And I think all with the equipment that you would find in your home. And I just very pleased that you have watched with me right the way through to the end. And I want to wish you well and enjoy making lovely things. Thank you.